All right, so in this video, we are making the Frank Jr. Um, not according to the pattern, but into this little toiletry bag dot kit. Um, it's got a handle at one end and then a D ring at the other end. Um, so if you want to like clip it to something, but also that way you can hold on to the little tab when you unzip it. So this one all together took me just over an hour to make. Um, and I'm just using the lining panels for the exterior and for the lining. And then I added this fun little accent. Um, this is made out of leather. So you will not find the step-by-step -step directions to this one in the pattern. Um, it's just using the pieces from the pattern. So just a real fun, quick little bag. This is a much simpler way to make it. Um, so in the regular pattern, you have a front pocket on the bag. Um, this method omits that front pocket. You could also assemble it in the same way to make a crossbody bag or to make the waist bag um, and just leave off the front pocket and use the lining main panel for the front and back. Um, or you can add the slip pocket still in the back. So there are many different ways that you can make this. If you don't have a sewing machine that can sew through um, multiple layers, this might be a better idea. Or if you are not as experienced, um, the front pocket on the other one might be a little more difficult than you're ready to tackle, then this is a good option. Um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and click the thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks for watching. So to make the Frank Jr. into a dop, dop kit, um, or if you wanted to make it into a crossbody bag without the front pocket. Um, you will use these three pieces only, the lining main, the zipper gusset, and the main gusset. Um, so I cut out um, from the exterior fabric two of the lining main. I cut out some leather accents that I'm going to sew onto this, um, and I am using leather for my exterior on this. You don't need to use leather. Um, so also one main gusset and two zipper gussets out of the exterior. And then out of the lining, I've got two lining main panels, two zipper gussets, and one main gusset. And then in addition to that, I have one um, kind of zipper tab that we'll put at the one end of the zipper. This is cut two inches wide by three inches long. And I have a handle, which is cut four inches wide by seven inches long. Um, and then we're going to use binding. This one is from Mormino, um, and it is Purple Galaxy. And then you'll have one 12 inch zipper with two poles attached, or you could use one pole if you want. and one D-ring. So first I'm just going to baste these um, little accent stripes onto my main panels. All right, the thread that I'm using today is um, Tex 70 Amon Strong Bond. I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. I got it at Wow. wow. I got the thread from Wawak, Wawak, whatever it is. All right, so I'm going to sew these little stripes on using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Um, I cut these stripes, this one in the center is one inch wide and these skinnier ones are half inch wide. Um, and then I just used double sided tape to stick them in place. The one inch strip is directly down the center and the others are one quarter inch from that one.
and hopefully I don't regret the uh, blue contrast thread. I was looking for something fun. These snips are from Mormino. Just trimming all my threads. All right, and I'm going to take the lining main, one of them, place it wrong sides together with the exterior main, um, and I'm going to use sewing clips, which I have glitter clips also from Mormy now, and I'm going to place them all the way around the outside edges. And then we're just going to base these panels together and then we'll repeat this whole process on the other main panels. Um, and if you're using a thin material and you want your dot bag to have more structure you can use interfacing, totally optional. Um, so I'm just going to base this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. Let's repeat that on this side.
all the squeaking is my hand wheel. I think I need to take, or yeah, I think that's what it's called. <clears throat> I think I need to take uh, it apart kind of and see what's rubbing, but I don't want to, so I haven't. Um, all right, those are sewed on, same process. We'll place the lining main wrong sides together with this exterior main, match up all the raw edges, and then use our clips to clip it together. Make sure everything's laying nice and flat. All right, I'm going to base that using a quarter inch smallance. We have both of those finished. Um, for our handle, I've drawn a line directly down the center of the back. And I'm going to use a piece of double-sided tape. This is three quarters of an inch wide, I think, which is probably overkill, but I'm out of my half inch. Um, all right, so we're just going to fold both of the long raw edges into almost the center line. Um, if you leave a little gap, it will fold nicer. I'm going to use one more piece of this. Just directly down one side. and then we'll fold this in half. And this way we'll just be ready when, when we assemble the gusset. We have all of the other parts already prepared. This blue leather is one of my favorites. Um, I made a whole ugly naked guy hobo bag out of this. I don't have a lot left. Alright, so we're just going to top stitch down both of the long edges. You can really sew all the way around it. Um, we're going to use a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm using a stitch length of 5 for this guy. You 
you want to use a longer stitch length when sewing vinyl or leather um, so that you don't perforate it and cause it to tear. Actually, so just a couple more lines of stitching um, for decor decorative purposes only. One eighth of an inch in from the other line. So now our handle is one inch by seven inches. And then for the little pole, we will kind of repeat this. Um, I have a line down the center long ways. So it's one inch in from each of the long edges. And then I will Hold each side, each of the long raw edges to that center line. Just that slowly. And then I'm going to just sew down each side and I'll probably do the same thing as I did here so that we have um, the double stitching lines. And then I'll trim the threads. All right, and then this tab will get folded in half. <clears throat> and slide the D-ring on and then baste the ends together using a quarter inch seam allowance. If you were making this crossbody, you would still make two of these. Um, and you would not make this handle. So we're going to assemble the zipper gusset portion. So I have one exterior zipper panel and my 12 inch zipper and I'll place the zipper right side down. Uh, 
on the right side of the exterior zipper gusset. And then I'm just going to clip all the way down that. I cannot remember where I got these zipper pulls. Um, they're little skeletons, but I will figure that out and link it in the description. All right, and then we're just going to base this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, and then we'll place a lining zipper gusset right sides together with the exterior zipper gusset. The zipper will be sandwiched in between, and then we will just place clips on the length of this with the zipper where the zipper is sewn. All right, and then we're going to sew that together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then we're going to fold the exterior and lining zipper gusset away from the zipper and wrong sides together. Um, this lining fabric is from Soulful Therapy. Um, I cannot recall. Something Oxford, I think. I will also look up the name of that and I will link it in the description. I call it the wrong thing, so I don't want to say anything that's not really what it is. And I'm just clipping together along the length of this to keep everything positioned properly. All right, and then I'm just going to top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I'll continuously pull the zipper gussets away from the zipper as I sew.
All right, now we're going to repeat that same process to attach the other zipper gusset to the other side of the zipper. I'm gonna try this time to sew with the zipper on the bottom. Um, the leather, the suede side of the leather is kind of grippy, I guess, as it goes across the bed of my machine. And I think it kind of causes it to stretch a little bit, which I want to prevent as much as possible. So first I'm sewing this at a quarter inch seam allowance. Slide the zipper poles out of the way as we get to them. All right, same process. Let's place the zipper lining zipper gusset right sides together with this on the other side of the zipper. We will clip that in place. And I'm just going to readjust it because I think I did not have it lined up properly. And then we're going to sew that together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing to fold the lining and exterior zipper gussets away from the zipper and wrong sides together. I can kind of finger press my lining um, and it will crease since it has like the plasticky backing. And I'm just going to put some clips on this to hold everything in place. And then we're going to top stitch along the zipper using the 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I will continue to pull the zipper gussets away from the zipper as I sew.
now we will take um, the little tab and center it over one end of the zipper. And I'm just going to baste that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. And this can get pretty thick, so keep in mind the capabilities of your sewing machine. Um, you probably don't want to use leather if you don't have an industrial. And um, at that, you still want to keep it thinner. If you have uh, leather that you're using, you could use a webbing for this um, to make that a little bit thinner. Um, I'm not going to put the strap on yet. <laughs> okay, so let's place the lining right sides together with the lining. So this is the lining main gusset, right sides together with the lining side of the zipper gusset. All right, I'm going to baste this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. I do have my hump jumper handy if I need it. All right, and then we'll place the exterior main gusset right sides together with that and clip together. And then we're going to sew this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, now I want to flip these wrong sides together and top stitch. Um, I would normally use an eighth of an inch, but I think because of the leather being so thick, I'm going to use a quarter of an inch, which should actually work out a little bit easier. I don't necessarily know why it works out easier, but just trust me. And then we're going to, you know what, I want to put um, one of my tags in. So I don't think I have black leather, but I do have black cork. And then I have a variety of different leather ones. Oh, I could use it. Silver leather, I think that looks good. Or, yeah, I like the silver better.
Um, these are from Heartwood and Hyde. And I have like just a huge variety of them. Or I can use cork. I like this one. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I want it centered from left to right and beneath the seam. Um, and then I'm going to fold the lining back out of the way and only sew through the exterior and the tag. And I'm not going to back stitch on this because I'll pull the threads through to the back. So I'm pulling the threads through to the back here, and then I'm just going to tie that in a square knot. Trim the threads. And then I'm going to melt the thread with a lighter to secure the knot. All right, and then I'm going to repeat to attach this to the other end of the zipper gussets. So first I'm going to line up my lining. I'm actually going to, I think, just do this in one fell swoop because it's almost lunchtime and I'm getting hungry. Meaning I want to be done. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So there really is no benefit other than to help it avoid it um, shifting as you sew, to sew the lining and then sew the exterior separate. right side out or well so the main gussets are wrong sides together and we're going to top stitch beneath that seam also using a quarter inch seam allowance sewing over that tab. Mm -hmm. All right, 
right now. We're just going to um, top stitch or baste all the way around the raw edges of the gussets mm -hmm. using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. want to kind of make sure you keep everything lined up as you go. that on the other side. All right, so now we want to kind of mark the centers. Um, so first, fold it in half, matching up the side seams. And then you can mark the top and bottom centers from there. And I'm just going to snip into the crease um, about an eighth of an inch. All right, and then I'm going to match the top and bottom centers and mark the centers on the sides. the side where the little d-ring is not we want to take our handle and figure out which side you want to show um, and I'm just going to center it over that center line actually I'm going to place it just beneath the seam allowance um, where the zipper gusset so it's slightly lower than centered I think just because of that thickness, I don't want to... No, I'm centering it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to baste it on using a quarter inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and then I'm going to repeat to center this over the center mark on the side and base in place also using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you want to take your lining main pattern piece and use it to mark the centers of the top and sides on both of the main panels. All centers are marked. I'm going to use my eighth inch double-sided tape to help me with this part. So I'm just going to go all the way around the outside edge. And I think I will this time do both sides of the gusset at once. We'll see how that works out. All right, now there is no front or back and no top or bottom to this. So whatever you, whichever way you orient it, it doesn't matter just as long as it's uh, not sideways. Which I mean, really, I guess if you wanted a bag that was taller than it was wide, you could put it sideways. All right, so right sides together. Let's match up the centers along the top and bottom first. And we use the double stick tape because it really just helps hold everything in place. And I like to sew with the main panel facing up 
against the presser foot. And I kind of wrap the gusset around the main panel is the best way I can describe it. Um, and that's the way to get it to fit the best. All right, and some of these parts are going to be a little bit thick. So just be patient. Mostly like over the handle. And then keep in mind, as always, that the edges are not going to match up. It matches at the seam line. So you will have wrinkles along the edge, but at the 3 8 inch seam line, it should lay nice and flat. And you can adjust it until it does. And this is the process known as easing around the corners. And lots of clips and double-sided tape make this much easier. One more corner. All right, and then we're going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Um, you can switch to your zipper foot if you want. supposed to have a rooster. Um, they were supposed to be six hens, but, oh, actually seven hens, but one of them was not a hen. So thankfully we live somewhere where we are able to keep them.
careful when you sew over the handle portion because it is thick there. And I just use my little screwdriver to adjust if I need to, if I'm going to sew over any um, toppers. I find that it works better than an actual, actual, actual stiletto. Also, I feel like if you get a wrinkle in leather, it's a little bit more forgiving than vinyl. Um, you can kind of smooth it out still. One side done, one more side to go, and then the binding. So much quicker and much more simplified to exclude the front pocket. Um, and so far, this is what we have. So that's super freaking cute. I was going to give this to somebody, but I think I'm keeping it for myself because I really like it. I really like it. So same process, we are going to match the top and bottom centers first. And the tape stayed fine on the other side of the gusset, so no reason to do it in two separate parts. Um, you can add all of the tape to the gusset at one time and the paper did not peel off at all. Um, and honestly, you might want to unzip the zipper part way before you actually sew this together.
So now we've got that clipped together and we'll repeat. So this also using a three eighths inch seam allowance. Alright, finally, we'll add the binding and we're done. Alright, so this is the purple galaxy bag binding from Mormino. Um, and this is more of a finished, like, ribbon quality. So, you don't need to, um like singe the edges with a lighter like I did with the other binding. I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer than needed and I'm just going to go ahead and cut both pieces now and I'm going to use double-sided tape on it but it is not self-adhesive. All right, 
right, so I have my three quarters of an inch um, double-sided tape. And I use that, and I learned this from Lauren. She calls this, um, she sells this binding, or this double-sided tape on her website. It's from Weft and Warp Co., um, but she also sells it. And she calls it Binding Buddy. Um, I need to create some room for myself. All right, so I'm just going to place this all the way down one side of this strip of binding. And I'm trying to keep it centered as best as possible. And you, this is totally optional. Um, I just feel like it works a lot easier for me when it's taped on. Obviously, as you saw, I use a lot of tape for different parts in this bag. Um, and I just really think it helps a lot. So obviously not quite as easy as the self-adhesive, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I am really stuck right now. Okay, good enough. Okay, so I like to start attaching this at the bottom center. And what I do is attach it around the sides first. So right now I'm just lining it up with the 3 8 inch stitching. And I will stick it all the way around the sides. Now this one is also a little bit thicker than the self-adhesive from Fabric Therapy. Um, so I guess keep that in mind with adding more bulk if you used thicker materials. This one does add a little bit more. So if you see how I'm lining that up right with that seam line. And then I just overlap at the center slightly. All right, and once that's all stuck on, then I fold it over and stick to the other side. I like to start at the top and bottom first, and then I do the sides, and then I'll do the corners. This is sticking a lot better than the other one, so I don't think I'll need clips at all. And now I'm just going to sew this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance.
Alright, and one more binding and we're done. Alright, so, and there is no wrong side or right side of this, I don't think. Looks the same to me on both sides. Um, you do want to kind of hit the ends with a lighter because it will unravel. So let's see. Just place the double-sided tape directly down the center to the best of my ability anyway. Be easier just in my hands. to repeat the same process for this side. That was stupid. So I start at the bottom center and just follow the line of stitching. Top and bottom first. And then the sides. And then the corners. Now we're going to sew this on using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're done.
All right, and then we'll turn our finished bag right side out. And I just kind of roll all of the seams to get them pushed out nicely. All right, and we are done. So there you have a cute little toiletry bag that looks pretty lopsided. That side's good. Um, it's got a little handle on it. So, yeah, super cute. And that way is a quicker, easier way. If you wanted this to be a crossbody bag, um, then you would just add the D-ring as it shows in the pattern to each side and you have a crossbody. If you want it to be the belt bag, you would still just add the um, waist bag strap tabs, connectors um, to the back and the waist strap and then you can just omit the front pocket.